Five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Sea View Estate, where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220 or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Remind him that the last time he sent the money, it was not enough to buy all the provisions. Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rates. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money.
Welcome to the brunch on Kerfado Life. I'm Lamin Cham, welcoming you to our weekly current affairs program. This week, very quickly, we go over the menu. After 871 days, the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparation Commission, TRRC, have now ended their public sessions. We will talk to the TRRC members to find out what has been discovered and what next for the Commission. The former ruling APRC is also busy flexing its muscles uh, for the December presidential elections with the start of uh, the Back to State House campaign. And we also will update ourselves with uh, whether or not the party is talking to any other group for a possible alliance. And we will also talk about the inter-party, that is the inter-party committee, the platform where all political parties in the Gambia converge to discuss matters. We will visit them to find out what has been their activities concerning the voters' registration. And talking about the voters' registration, the Independent Electoral Commission has started formally its election cycle uh, that will culminate, of course, into the December presidential elections, as well as National Assembly and local government elections in 2022 with uh, the voter registration exercise. This and others are in the menu this week in the brunch. I'm Lamin Chan. Now, let's go straight to the first item, that is the ruling, the former ruling APRC, like I said, have been busy uh, on a campaign they call Back to State House, whether you believe it or not, they believe that uh, in 2021 they will sweep the polls and go back uh, to regain the power they lost back in 2016. And, well, who else who best talk about those issues than Dudu Ja, deputy spokesman of the party. Dudu, welcome to the brunch once again. Thank you very much, Mr. Chap. Uh, my greetings to the viewership. Mm -hmm. Really happy to be back and thank you for having me once more on the brunch. When you say back to State House, Many people wonder whether you are daydreaming or it's a pipe dream. <laughs> are there any realistic hope that the APRC can go back to State House in December? I, I'm saying this uh, given, of course, uh, in every country and in every election, the party who, loses, who lost power always find it difficult to regroup and you know, win immediately the election immediately after. What? Why do you hope? Why do you place your hopes? Which which planet do you place your hopes? <laughs> of course, on planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell so, us about uh, it. Um, it's really interesting. We've been working very hard. We did work very hard, and are still doing. And um, based on the strategies we put in place, that's what gives us the self belief that come December fourth, twenty twenty one. APRC will be back to State House. Either we're going solo or we're going to do it jointly with other political parties. We are of the firm belief that we're going back to State House. It's not me talking. Uh, right now, that uh, agenda has been launched uh, by a week or two ago. What we're embarking on, we're at a period that is very crucial as far as elections are concerned, that is the voter registration. So we're sensitizing our people, like who is a Gambian, what documents do you require in order to register. We believe we have our people in their large numbers, but it's going to be very fruitless if you have a lot of people, they're not registered. Then if they don't have voters card, they cannot vote for you, so their numbers are not going to count. So that's where we began, make sure that our people People go and register, have all the required um, Gambian documents in order to acquire a voter's card. And secondly, we had a campaign to do fundraising. Mm -hmm. Fundraising, in a sense, politics is about money. Mm -hmm. You cannot have the strategies, the ideas, and the numbers. Without finance, you cannot execute. And this fundraising is very, very important. We do that through sale of tickets, membership contribution, organizing fundraising activities that are ahead of us. We're working through, towards that, and that would come to pass. And uh, thirdly, it's about our campaign 
change strategy. We need to reach out to people, not only to our membership, especially the undecided voters. They want to be convinced, most of whom don't belong to any party, but they're waiting for what candidate are you putting forward? What are your policies and programs? What do you have for Gambia? In order to convince them to give you your vote. So based on this, this is why we said back to state house. This is not just a mere slogan, but definitely we have activities embedded in it that will definitely give us that drive to head to state house. Well, you know, one thing you, you can say that for APRC, in the, in the, in immediately, in the period immediately after the uh, change of government, APRC was like a plague. Everybody was avoiding it. <laughs> now you have the uh, boldness to say that you will go to state house either by yourself or in uh, collaboration with one or two political parties. Meaning, of course, now you no longer you now graduate from that plague status when when everybody was trying to avoid you. People are opening up to embrace you. What has changed? Because obviously, as far as we know, it, I mean, the APRC was the party that was here that everybody disagreed with in 2016. What do you, what makes you relevant now? You think? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Cham. That's very important. I would not say everybody, but a lot of people well, lot disagree, of people disagree with, with us. You. <laughs> yes, yes, that is quite true. And yeah. like you said, some mm. people saw it as a plague, mm. you know, a no-go go area for joining APRC. Mm. But thanks to the executive, through the leadership of the Right Honorable Fabaka Itombongjata, mm. when at such a time the former president, His Excellency, uh, Jame, left this country, mm. they were reaching out. First, they began with uh, ministers, you know, people who were like uh, in parliament to see who will stay the affairs of the party. But I can say almost all of them excuse themselves. When they reached out to Fabakari Tombong, he said he has retired from politics. Mm -hmm. You know, they told him, we're looking for people to lead this party, but nobody's willing to take it up. It's not a matter of choice. You have to. It's like they impose leadership on him that all the efforts you people did, you cannot just sit back and allow the party to die. Mm -hmm. So that really hit him hard. Mm -hmm. He accepted that he will do his utmost. That's when APRC started having in-house meeting, in those meetings. Thing, you know, putting up things together, the likes of the former mayor of KMC, Yanko Bakoli, played a crucial role. We even were doing all our meetings at his compound. He opened up and said, use this place. Whatever you need is at your disposal. You know, most of them came together, and the first rally we organized in Buffer Zone, that was really the turning point for the party. Mm -hmm. When the target was 50,000 people to attend that rally, mm -hmm. I believe we exceeded that, that number. And that was stunned a lot of people. Oh, if they could have this such type of crowd, mm -hmm. we believe that this party would survive. That was the turning point. Mm -hmm. That's what motivated people. But still, the challenge was there. Mm -hmm. After the rally, can we still keep up to that? We said yes. Mm -hmm. We went to Kotukware again. Mm -hmm. You know, the numbers were there. We went to Birkama, the numbers were there. At Abuko, the numbers were there. We organized that peaceful demonstration at Sukuta Jabang traffic light. The numbers were amazing. You know, even people who left the party started coming by. The youth rally we did at Jabang, people believe we have the numbers. But numbers alone, like I mentioned earlier, isn't enough. You need to do more than that. So your people must be documented so that they will be eligible voters. That is very important. Without the voters card, they cannot definitely put you in power. So we believe we have the numbers. Uh, it's not about self-confidence, but it's a reality. So we're trying to transform those numbers into something meaningful to catapult the party to be in state house in 2021. Okay, many people will believe, your critics would say, okay, uh, the persistence and the hard work of uh, people like FTJ that you describe and mm -hmm. others who really make sure that the party really survive and regroup. Yes, their efforts should be commended. Mm -hmm. But don't you think you have to give gratitude, of course, to the prevailing freedom that exists after the change to enable opposition polit politicians such as the people you are described and parties such as yours, I mean, to engage freely in political activity, something that was denied of political parties opposed to your party when you were in power. So you, you definitely have to be grateful for the change. Yeah, thank you very much. That we embrace, we appreciate, and we accept. When we found ourselves as opposition, the Right Honorable Fabakari Tombongyata made it very clear that the current government, by then it was the coalition government, 
we knew we made mistakes let them not repeat the same mistakes so we know we're not infallible mm. we made some wrongs that we accepted mm -hmm. but was it the same people now who did it no of course it is different okay. and we said when we were in government the opposition the way they operated mm -hmm. we are not going to repeat the same thing mm -hmm. that's when we said we are an opposition oh, with a difference. difference and we have proven that not for once mm -hmm. has aprc ever broken any law in this country mm -hmm. not for once have we ever created chaos in this country mm -hmm. we came in peace the, 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 we the, established the, the, ourselves despite, peacefully despite many provocations yes <laughs> with all the process you know the pressures on mm. on us at manka mankuna we were attacked mm. our people injured at busumbala repeatedly but we were very steadfast and said hey we contributed in building this gambia we're not going to be you know actors in creating chaos or destroying anything in the country mm -hmm what the leadership was telling us be patient mm. and our supreme party leader of course in all these audios that went viral mm. he's been imposing and emphasizing even when people insult us let's not respond to insult mm. let's show discipline mm. let's respect the laws of the land he has reiterated that over and over again mm. we have to thank him for that mindset mm. even though he is million miles away he could have said no get to the streets do this do that but he never encouraged for once for us to do anything that will be against the laws of the land we also thank and pray mm -hmm. for him that he has that mindset mm -hmm. wishing well for gambia and encouraging us to be law abiding so all this provocation for us we knew we took it as a trap mm -hmm. like people wanted to lure us out in the streets mm -hmm. you know when we do so we violate or break the laws we could be banned we could be suspended mm -hmm. you know our people can be apprehended and charged mm -hmm. for wrongs or crimes committed and that will not help the party so, so in other words you you knew the survival tactics exactly and then you applied them exactly <laughs> oh, yeah. all right despite our vehicles our accounts being seized and yeah. all that to okay. strangle us let's come to that we're still surviving okay you mentioned that because you said you are engaged in fundraising yes and your your funds are still seized by the state yes. is that correct or yeah. they have now released some of them not yet nothing has been released yet nothing has been released N -n not yet all right let's come to this point um you know a lot of people all generally are now having this perception mm -hmm. there is a lot of rapprochement uh, between the APRC and the NPP of President Barrow. Mm -hmm. In fact, President Barrow's critics have started accusing him of trying to leo the APRC. That is why he's not taking reforms that really would have discredited or would have uh, sidelined the APRC mm -hmm. uh, or angered them because he is really, really hopeful that he will get the support of the APRC. Well, initially, when reports suggesting that there is a talk between the APRC and the NPP, your officials denied, saying it was premature at the time, nothing tangible was working. Mm -hmm. But now you people have come up to say, indeed, you are talking to different political groups, yes. including NPP, except perhaps UDP. Mm -hmm. But is it not realistically true, almost certainly, that you are going to ally with the NPP and not anybody, and not, and not anybody different from them? um i wouldn't say only npp uh, what led to all this it started in 2017 by then there was no npp mm -hmm. i'll have to freshen up minds mm -hmm. and uh, the former president our supreme party leader his excellency yeah jambe gave the blessings for us to engage government uh, he's been in government he mm -hmm. knows about diplomacy and a lot of issues how things function he gave his blessings 2018 congress we had in Buyam. A Congress resolution was passed. Mm -hmm. And part of those resolutions was to engage government and stakeholders for the safe return of our Supreme Party leader. Mm -hmm. Part of those resolutions, again, the party delegates said, mm -hmm. we must engage government so that our vehicles that were seized from us mm -hmm. need to be given back. Mm -hmm. Our party accounts, mm -hmm. you know, the properties of the former president, mm -hmm. you know, for us, we believe some of which was illegally sold or seized, mm -hmm. should also be pursued, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So the executive is not embarking on a self-centered desire mm -hmm. in order to engage the government of the day. Like mm -hmm. I said, in 2018 too, there was no NPP. Mm -hmm. It's the president we were engaging. Okay. So people must not tie it to NPP now. Mm -hmm. It's a different ball game though when NPP came as a power. Mm -hmm. Because the desire then and now, it is different. By then, mm -hmm. President Barrow never said, you people should you know, join me so that I will have a second term. Because there was no party. But did he say that now? Yeah, now. Now he said it. No, now. Yes. Yes, that's what I'm saying. When he NPP said the APRC came, should join him 
so that he can have a second term. That is what I'm saying. That is now. So he's but it started then. Yeah. People must not tie it to NPP. That's why I said by then there was no NPP. Yes. He's the head of state. Yes. He's the one who's empowered by the 97 constitution. He has a lot of executive power. Mm -hmm. Certain things, if he says yes, is mm -hmm. yes. If he says no, is no. Mm -hmm. So who else should we engage or negotiate with besides the president? So that wasn't illegal, mm. and it was through a Congress resolution. Congress is the highest authority mm. as far as our constitution is concerned. Mm. And like we said, nothing has been agreed. Nothing is given. At the time, or even now. Even now. When that happens, we have nothing well, to in hide, the past, your people, and it is not illegal. In the past, your people denied even the remotest association, you know, or suggesting that there are, there are movements towards that. But no, now you are no, bold to say, no. now there have been tangible... Uh, movements on, we, on, on, in that direction. We never it? doubted the movements. Mm -hmm. Like what people said, well, we were negotiating for a, for a possible alliance. Yes. And that wasn't the case. And mm -hmm. it was never at an executive level. Now, mm -hmm. it is at an executive, executive level. level. By then, mm -hmm. they approach people. They mm -hmm. feel through mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. they will be able to penetrate the APRC. Okay. That's what led to it. Okay. But whatever doesn't come from the national executive, yes. it's not something tying to the party. Okay. Individuals have Very every good. right to engage and discuss. Okay. This, this we never yeah. doubted. Okay. Very yes. good. Now, um, we have seen former top guns. TP mm. we thought are still APRC mm. in the presence of former National Assembly members and governors, you know, publicly declaring their support for NPP. And they're supposed to be APRC. Until now, we thought they were <laughs> APRC. We haven't had APRC condemning them. Mm. So we, we believe that, okay, these are just having us. These are the people who are, the, 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 in other words, let me say, the advanced party. But it, it suggests to everybody watching that, I mean, these people are really virtually working on becoming one. Yes, thank you. It's very important that you raise such an issue. And like you said, the APRC never made any comments to us that. Yes. It's good that you asked the question. Yes. Because all of these people that went, mm. none of them has ever claimed to be APRC when Af this after national, the, after, after the, the impasse. None of them claimed to. None of them wow. could tell you this they, was the position I held they, at the APRC. And they've never publicly even, participated. Even in our activities, you don't see them around us. They yes. were former MPs, yes. yes. Some of them, even during the days of Jammeh, yeah. they left or, or they lost the positions that they had. Yes. Publicly, they were not seen or known to be having any position within the party. Everybody could be a sympathizer or mm -hmm. claim to be a member. Mm -hmm. You cannot restrict that. But for us, we don't have a problem when people leave one party and go to another. It's nothing new. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to end here. This will continue. Mm -hmm. Incumbency has a lot of influence. Mm -hmm. People must not undermine that. Mm -hmm. And the longer it stays, more people it is going to uh, motivate to join. People can take this to record. I'll just give you a short synopsis like when AP APRC came into 96, mm -hmm. people still doubted and they kept challenging. Mm -hmm. In 2001, it continued. Mm -hmm. In 2006 mm -hmm. and 2011, mm -hmm. that was the period like the whole Gambia was at APRC. Mm -hmm. Take this, you can do your further exactly. research. Yes, yes. Based on the power of incumbency. Mm -hmm. But after 2010 11, from 12 13, mm -hmm. that's when things started turning Check. around. So that's they, when social so, media so played a crucial role and, and, in and, trying to turn things they, around. And, and they overstayed their welcome. Yes, that's so when it started. started. From 14 15, it mm -hmm. was very tense. tense. And 2016, the ball and game, was, the was, game was typically was, was, different. The writing was on the wall. Yes. Good. So uh, give it a period, mm -hmm. people will be motivated to embrace incumbency. It's okay. powerful. You don't undermine it. Okay, now. Um, a lot of people said, what is the new attraction that Barrow has to offer to the APRC when, one, mm -hmm. your accounts remain frozen, mm -hmm. your vehicles remain seized, according to you, uh, how to call it, and more importantly, he has nothing to offer as far as President Jammeh's uh, plight is concerned. For example, you are talking about having him return as a respected former head of state. That is not the language we are hearing, at least publicly. We don't know what you are discussing privately. <laughs> but publicly, that's the language President Barrow cannot talk about. So many times when his language has been interpreted to so, suggest so something like that, they will come with a denial. Mm -hmm. uh, that no, they never said that. For example, as recent as a visit uh, conducted uh, by Sam Sar, who is believed to be APRC, even though he said he is not <laughs> a member of APRC. He just sometimes his comments coincide with their thinking. I mean, Sars even though he corrected that, he suggested that the president warm up to the idea of bringing back Jammeh, etc., etc. 
even though he's later commented that such things came from him. I mean, the government, I mean, officials came with a denial that the president never said such a thing. Right. So now, what is the attraction now? Uh, Mr. Barrow is given to the APIC in terms of these three things. Your assets are seized, your accounts are still uh, frozen, and he cannot guarantee, publicly at least, that he will, uh, I mean, facilitate Jammeh's return. Well, like I mentioned earlier, negotiations are ongoing and nothing concrete yet. Nothing is giving, nothing is promised. We're negotiating. And as a party, like I said, the Congress passed those resolutions. So it is an obligation upon the National Executive Committee to explore that. Whether they will be successful or not, that's a different Let question me ask, people need to ask. Are you, is your eventual um, union, or whatever you call it, alliance mm -hmm. or solidarity or whatever you with him on him, the MPP, would it depend on these things I have outlined? Uh, I mean, Jame coming, your assets been defrozen, and etc. Is that it, part of the conditions? It is part of it and it is key. Whether it will be now, if, if or Barrow not, it's cannot, cannot guarantee that, what will happen? He will, not, he will not work with APS? No, the executive will have to make a dec decision. That is not for me to say this or that. Like but, what we're weighing, we're saying what would be the country's interest and the party's interest. These two, we're not throwing it overboard. It is key in any negotiations we do, either with the president or NPP or any other party. Gambia, it's our priority. The party's interest too should be protected. But it will be different when it comes to negotiating with political parties. You will have to weigh them, their capabilities, you know, what they are in charge of but and you, what they you, are not. When you say that, many people believe that the UDP is seen to be the strongest. Well, you would say, if you say party, they would mm. say, okay, let's say, let's categorize opposition party. Yeah. Yet you are not talking to them. And you, if you said you are weighing, you are looking at the impacts and the weight of the parties. You, yes. you, you are avoiding UDP as a plank. Uh, um, they are big. Let me qualify this. All the parties that are, we're talking with or negotiating, APRC has never approached any of them. Oh, they are the ones, who are the ones coming to us. So and if, we've said it, our doors are not closed. So even if UDP, uh, pre, uh, um, lawyer Dabo or some, somebody comes to APRC and says, Tom Mong, you know what? I want your party to support me. I have a deal for Barrow, eh, for, for President Jamme, ex-President Jamme, if that is what you are afraid. We are no longer considering him as, uh, uh, you know, as somebody we don't want to deal with. You will, you will talk to them. Yes, we said our doors are open to all political parties that are registered in this country. And again, it is Honorable Lawyer Dabo that make it publicly known that the UDP government and the Dabo presidency will prosecute President Jame and co. That will not be a welcoming news to so, the so, APRC so, party and its so membership. So that alone... Uh, it's a problem. No, he said it based but, on what. So coming but, to APRC, but, yeah, but they, Barrow, they will raise those but issues. Mr. Barrow, Mr. Barrow may not say it directly, but his ministers, mm -hmm. as recent as uh, this year, Ahmad Ba said, if 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 President Barrow, if Jammeh ever step here, he will he will face justice. And Mr. Ahmad Ba is very much President Barrow's right hand man now. You know, being the right hand man doesn't qualify him. Ahmad Ba does not have those powers. But he, he could be saying it. what he wants, what he wills. That is Ahmad but, Ba as a minister. But Barrow did not come to condemn or to disagree with him. Yes, because what he so what made what you he believe that he's may not, not talking? Not. What made you believe he's not talking on behalf of Barrow? Because politics is about interest, like. The saying goes, there's no permanent enemy, there's no permanent friend, but permanent interest. Okay. Barrow knows what his interest would be. Ahmad Bak, as a minister, was hired. He could be fired and somebody else could replace him. Ah. He could be left there and reduced to a lesser role. Ah. It is for the leader so to, as far to, as you to, are to decide. As long it, as Barrow did not, yes, did if, not yes. categorically made it to you that I cannot offer this, yes. I cannot offer this, yes. you will still continue to talk to me. He you. has the powers as the leader. If somebody different from lawyer Usain Udabo said it at UDP, mm. we, we would, would not we have would considered it seriously. I we think. said it's Mr. X or Mrs. Y, they're wishful thinking. Mm. But if the leader himself says that, then you that is very that. worrying. Okay, very so worrying. The, recently, there yeah. have been some you know, comments from the grassroots or some members of the <laughs> uh, APRC who are saying, look, uh, leaders such as FTJ, Fabakari, Tombong, and others, I mean, she is a lady, and Our I think, Sanyang, yeah, and are you referring other, to? there are other people abroad mm, yes. who also made the tambas and some made Lami comments, tamba. comments such as that, mm. that the hierarchy, the top leadership of the elite, uh, APRC are mortgaging the party to President Barrow. <laughs> uh, and that, you spent mm -hmm. five years 
misleading the you know the grassroots supporters with the notion that Jammy will come back and probably even contest or take back his presidency when you know that that possibility is as remote as as as, as almost impossible. Now you with the election coming, you know that of course you always know that this Jammy's coming would be impossible before the elections. Mm -hmm. But you kept misleading the grassroots <laughs> and they kept believing that. Now you know that you must now hold the bull by the horns by telling them the truth that look, we have to go into these elections without Jamme. And that's not going down well with them. So all these, uh, I mean, criticisms are coming against your executive. No, we, or false. let me clarify yeah. some of these claims or allegations. We never said that we're going into elections without Jamme. None of the executive members has ever mentioned that. So if, you're going with him to the if, elections? If any one of us did, they can prove me wrong. I never had any of the executives say that. that that we, we will are go going into the elections without Jamme. We are yet to so, say so that. So up to now, because you're still going with him? St still there is time. But I mean, still there is time. You, you still don't believe that Jamme cannot come into this country? We cannot believe that. We cannot believe and conclude and say he's not coming. Like I said, it's politics. Anything could, could happen. So we're not closing doors. Okay? okay? What we're saying is we're making it clear. What the law says, the electoral law says, is clear. And until we exhaust that, mm -hmm. you cannot make any conclusive decision. Now, saying that the grassroots so were, all, were misled... So even with all this, uh, let's say, you know, what people would say, you know, mm -hmm. prospects of may even facing court action, you know, somewhere with all these allegations that have international proportions and international implications all besetting President Jammeh, you still believe that he can pack up from Malabo, jump on the plane and come to Banjul? That is our belief. People are entitled to their belief, whatever they think or what they want. That's why I said, until an act, That unless is your prayers, or that's you definitely tangibly believe this possible? It, it is our belief. It is possible. For okay. us, nothing is impossible. Ah. Like I said, it's also politics. Okay. Like, let me take you back to misleading the grassroots. We never misled our grassroots. Ah. Information that comes to us, we, the top brass of the executive, have been communicating to Jame. But then we have and been he's been telling them I about said, his coming. I said misled. Where did they get the idea that he was coming? They went to clear his farm, clean his compound. No, Where no, did they get information no, that he was coming? No. How that, many false Jame returns have been reported? Declaring. Where was, did they get that from? Okay. If you allow me, I will be able okay, to okay. clarify that. Declaring yeah, yeah. was not attached to his coming. They said the place is neglected, it was very bushy. And they have to clear the place. Oh, maybe, yeah. maybe the people. But we had messages that he was coming. That's why the people. That were. that was not spare hided by the executive. Did you see any executive member in but that clearing? But did you come to tell them publicly that look, clean the place if you wish, but Jamme is not coming. We never said that. But they, you never said it. We never said. They that. said it, but you never corrected. Them. Where did they get the information from? Not from us. That's why I told you that but clearing. You, but you knew that was not correct. You didn't come to no. tell them. There are family members living there in that compound. Ah, okay, okay. There are family members, people who still reside there. They yeah. don't have the numbers for the cleaning. Okay. Maybe the mindset, what was told to other people. We had the same information that he is coming. That's why people were clearing. Nobody told us directly and we never said it. That has to be clear. Okay. So it's but not we easy. also had the same thing that he's coming. Mm -hmm. So people, maybe it was to motivate people, give them the zeal so that they can give a helping hand in clearing. At times, it could be a tactic. I am not saying exactly. I said maybe well, that was the case. Tactic. If that came from the executive, then we, you would have seen us in the forefront wow. when it comes to clearing. I because see. we cannot tell people, go and we sit back. We never did that. Mm. Anything we call to, you will see us in the in forefront. forefront. Anything organized or said by the executive, we don't uh, 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 appear as backbenchers or behind the scene. We take the lead. That's why I said the executive never said that. Now, when we say Jammes coming, it is our belief mm. that he will come back to this country. He himself have been saying it. Audios that before were released. The election, before the elections? Yes. This, we, <laughs> we, that's why I said, with the little time left, we're still hopeful that there could be a possibility of him coming. We're not ruling it out. Unless all avenues are exhausted, then we'll say, okay, he cannot come before election because this, 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 this. But we have the belief He's a citizen and nothing can prevent him from coming back. Now, when he comes, he will go to the courts. That's not up to us. It's not for us to decide. That is for the government and other stakeholders. They have every right to do so. We're not stopping them from doing or if they want to prosecute. That's what they want to do, fine. But our belief is he has to come back and we believe he will come back. Nobody can take that from us.
We, we, you, you, again, I, I want, I'm happy on you, uh, you know, holding the bull by the horn and realizing mm -hmm. at the moment the, ra the near impossibility of such a situation, even from Mr. Barrow himself. Don't it occur to you that Mr. Barrow may, yes, in his own personal uh, interest, he may be interested to have him back or to give some sort of concession as far as Jamie is concerned to the APRC, but he's not capable of doing it simply because one, he doesn't have the capacity, the control, <laughs> or he does not want to risk it. You, that doesn't occur to you. All this could be a possi possibility, but he's yet to give us any concrete decision or to tell us this is what I am going to do. Negotiations are negotiations. Everybody has an interest to protect. And at some point, we must compromise. What else? If you want to reach an agreement, there is something you need to compromise in order to achieve what you want. Now, APRC is a hot cake. There is no party in this country who doesn't want APRC's backing. This is why now, we listen, said we are the king. Where members. do you where do you place this hope? Because so many analysts have said that since the change, mm -hmm. the APRC has been reduced <laughs> to just 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 a certain area. Even though you said, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, your fifty thousand uh, rally at buffer zone and those that followed really have demonstrated that you are a party. But when we see the national elections that happen after that, we still believe that uh, the APRC still don't have the numbers nationally to influence anything nationally. Yes, because of the strategy the coalition government they put in place by then. Yeah. Elections is about mobility. That's yeah. why they seize our vehicles. Election is about oh, financing. So, so the ladies they froze our account. Yes, that's what ah, I said. I they see. want to strangle us to die. Ah, we could not put up candidates in many constituencies yeah. because the final sale muscle wasn't there. Is we couldn't reach to lots of places. Is it not because you knew it was going to be a waste of time? You didn't have any support there anymore? No, the resources at our disposal I haven't had much was, of was, I haven't was had really much, used I haven't had to its much fullest of capacity. I haven't had much of APRC in the LR in the URR, in the CRRR <laughs> over the last four years. What happened? I can tell you up to date, APRC is really alive and kicking in the URR. <sighs> LRR, we have lost some support. It's mm. not about bragging. No. We are very realistic in what we say and do. We have lost some support in, 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 in LRR NBR? because of lack of mobility and finance. Uh, NBR likewise. Same thing. Like URR? I'll give you... I will give you certain examples. Mm. We have our own people, mm. you know, who put up their own candidates and finance it under another party's ticket because they don't want to lose out to other political parties. But they told us we stood for this party, but we are still APRC. Not I was there directly. Mm. You know, I spent four days in the upper in the in the in, the, in Fast Chaho and, and about place. five other villages. We went around, we met the people, discussed with them. Mm. And I will give you a scenario. Okay. Uh, one of our candidates stood on a GDC ticket. Mm. So when the information reached them that GDC petitioned Pa Amadou Suso who wanted to contest the chairmanship in URR, mm. that very day they were supposed to organize a victory celebration and they boycotted it. That they cannot celebrate when GDC are trying to knock us down. Mm. So which shows that they are APRC under a GDC ticket. I was there. Mm. Nobody told me what happened. Mm. And I could get you connected to people there and they will give you the full narration of it. I will not be here to making up stories. Okay. That's why I said anywhere we lose support, I agree that we've lost support. Even in CRR at some areas, we've lost support. Mm -hmm. All we need is to reach out to people, talk to them because what they tell us is we're not seeing APRC. We're not hearing APRC. But we are APRC. So so when it comes to elections, we don't put up candidates. They have a choice to make. If they don't stand on the APRC ticket, they would rather swing to another party for their own interest. So, so you, you, that explains, according to you, how you were not visible nationally exactly. in those elections. Exactly. But because maybe, with our vehicles, we were able to mobile countrywide. And we had the financing said, putting up candidates. What said, what you are very much good at mm -hmm. is mobilizing people. Because we not, have the no, experience. No, no. We've not, been there for not, 22 not, years. Not from uh, after the elections, that is after the change. Mm -hmm. In the past, you can claim to have, you know, <laughs> support from, from corner to every corner. Yes. But after the changes, what happened is you, you, you really hone your skills at mobilize. You, you, you use your experience mm -hmm. in mobilizing over the last 22 years. Mm -hmm. You make sure that you mobilize the entire support base, no matter how concentrated mm -hmm. or confined that is. For example, I give an example. If it is San mm -hmm. here, if, if APRC is just 5,000, I mean, you make sure that all these 5,000 are mobilized.
Yes, I can so tell I, you so how. So if somebody sees that, you say, oh, this elementary are all atheists. <laughs> well, actually, what you are good at is making so that everybody who supports you is out. You are very good at that. Yes, But we, it doesn't really reflect. Yes. I mean, the strength or... I mean, how widespread your support is in that particular area. Yes, we have, we have strategies. We yeah. have the experience. <laughs> like we said, the people at the executive, they have the experience. They've been there for a very long time. Like we said in the local dialect or the national dialect, we're not Tunis when it comes to politics. We're not new in the game. We've been there for a very long time. What we did is we started with one R that is retaining what we have, how to retain it. Then secondly, the other R is to recruit like all um, those whom you know that they're sitting on the fence, we want to recruit them to make sure they join the party. Another one was uh, um, like reconciliation, another R we use. Those who left the party or in some way there were problems, how do we reconcile them and bring them back to the party? You know, these are tactics that we applied and since 2017 up to date, it has worked for us. That's why whenever we're out there, people, the whole world will know that APRC has once again spread its feathers and they will see the numbers that we can put together. You said you are the king makers. Um, your critics are the only king you want to make is President Barrow because uh, <laughs> you are not talking. You, I mean, you are not talking with, <laughs> seriously with others. So. Of course, of course, we are. We're talking with other political parties besides NPP. There are four other political parties that have engaged the APRC, but still nothing concrete. You, you, nothing has been. You against. just emphasize the importance of incumbency. Y those yes. Three, those three. No, no listen. Those that is three, general, no, not listen, only for APRC. Those three or four parties have not in the offer. As far as your rating of incumbency is concerned, they have not in the offer. Of course. So naturally, most realistically, the person you are talking to, with all seriousness, is, is <laughs> President Barron and MPP. No. If, be frank with it. No, it's four parties. Two of them they has have not in the offer as far as your rating of incumbency no, is if concerned. I, I it's don't, only Barrow who can offer. <laughs> no, I don't. I said based on the Congress resolutions, it's only Barrow we can engage. Okay. But when it comes to how do we come together and uh, to contest the elections, they have a lot to offer. There is no political party that you'll say, okay, it's new or they don't have the numbers. Those numbers could make a difference. Okay. Politics is about numbers, so you don't undermine them. Two of them are new parties. The other two have been in the game for a long time. It's four. I don't want to mention their names for now, but oh. whenever but we reach agreement with them, we will, we will make but, it known. But definitely you are liberty to say they don't include UDP. That's no, no, yes. I can vividly say APRC and UDP, we've never engaged in any di okay. this discussion. We've never approached them. They, they, they have never approached us. That is yet to happen. Okay, you, you, finally, mm. you, 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 you did not address the allegation from this hour. Uh, Sanya and you know people yes, like Lamin, I, Lamin Tamba. I yes. wanted to talk about yeah, it, okay. but you brought Final, up another follow-up okay. question. Final, that really what's your reaction? From they that. said you are claiming four million dollars uh, from President Barrow. You said uh, or, or NPP. You said that as a condition, and that you are mortgaging the, the party to him. You no longer, uh, you know, you no longer following the advice of uh, uh, the person you call a supreme leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. I said in this context that I, I said people said you wasted a lot of time misleading the grassroots that Jame is coming now that election is near and you know you always know that he couldn't come even though you still believe that he will come <laughs> it's not too late now people they are beginning to ask questions now um, why are you uh, I mean you know warming up to President Barrow when he didn't give you anything that you really want to achieve in terms of Jame's plight for example because on top of all this, it's, it's about Jammeh that you really put focus on, his possible return, etc. Okay, it's a very crucial question and allow me to elaborate. Okay. First and foremost, mm -hmm. I want to make it clear. Mm -hmm. There was a day we had an executive meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, some issues we discussed at executive level was leaked to other people. Oh, okay. It means it, it was a secret, mm -hmm. but others came to know about it. Okay. So from that point on, mm -hmm. all the executive members, mm -hmm. we brought the Quran or the Bible based on your faith, your belief that mm -hmm. we all swore mm -hmm. to show our loyalty to the party mm -hmm. and to keep the secret. That's, what, typ that's typical Jammeh style. Whatever to, is to, not to meant for... To make sure that you, yes, your, your, yes. your loyalty is 
totally. This is not this yeah. is not about Jamme. This uh, is I'm about protecting you, the interest of the party. APRC style, then. Yes, mm. APRC style. Okay. This is about protecting the party. So you interest. have to bring the Bible and the Quran. To yes, so what, whatever Nobody is meant for in mobile, house. I, mean, I guess mobile phones are <laughs> all exempted from the. Sometimes key it. issues when we discuss at executive level, every mobile is mobile oh. out. You cannot trust people hundred percent. You tell them let mobile phones stay outside yes. okay. because of the experience. You yes. don't know who is recording, and right. these are gadgets. Uh -huh. They are very cunning sometimes when what people want to do. Not everybody is hundred percent committed, mm -hmm. and we brought that. That whoever is not willing to swore, yeah. then definitely we cannot trust you. So we all did. Yeah. It's not everything that is discussed in house must be public consumption. That's true. So people must understand that. Yes. But there are people here in the Gambia and even in the diaspora who feel mm -hmm. being members of the party. Mm -hmm. maybe they have contributed a dollar or two mm -hmm. they have a right to know everything the executive is ah, doing even things that so if they keep problem. pushing asking questions they don't get answers they want to go public ah. and allege and do everything I so see. that the executive will come out and tell them no they, they don't give us four million or oh, we did not kill them this now they will get the facts ah. it's a game they are playing and this is not shaking us the list we swore to these holy books and we maintain that Whatever is meant for everybody, we're doing it. Okay. Why do we organize con congresses? Yeah. We give activity report. What mm. the party engage in? We give financial statements. We read out resol resolution. And Congress is like the delegates are representatives of the people. Mm. Even the diaspora, we write to them for them to send delegates to come and attend. Mm. So the doors are open for everybody to know during Congress how the party has been functioning. But every time A, B, and C, we discuss issues, no party comes to the social media and disclose their financial status or the issues that they do. This is why Congress is not every member's business, but delegates, people selected and chosen. So they could do Facebook Live, they could take out audios, allege and insult. We're not going down to their level. Okay, they've said it, we have to come and clarify. No, we don't operate like that as a national executive. People entrusted us this leadership, they have hope and confidence that we will deliver. We will not disappoint the people and we will never fail them. What we are saying, there's nothing concrete as far as our negotiations in, in, with, with Barrow. And it's not illegal. For instance, this four million they are talking about, if they have, it happens to be given to APRC, is it Duruja's money? No. Does you, it belong to Tombong or Amul did, did or Mayor? No. The, the, the question is, did you ask for it? Whether we ask for it, yes, it's negotiations. Yes, we're negotiating. You did. You did. You did ask. Are you going to have that or less than that or more than that? It's negotiation. Nothing no, concrete. No, you know what most people want to know is whether the woman is right in her allegation that you are asking for four million from NPP and President Barrow. No, we have a team that is negotiating with them. So the team is putting up figures, and these figures and are not that, exact. And that includes four million. Some some are claiming for less than that. Some are saying two million. Some are saying one million. Who's to give you that? Barrow or NPP? The president is who we are engaging. So he should give you asking him to give you this four claims million. is our account. They oh, have frozen okay. our we are claiming this money that is in our account. Ah, okay. Not like for them to give it to I us to discuss at party important. level. It's this is why I said if important. they get to us, they will get the right information. We are claiming vehicles. Yes, we are claiming our vehicles uh -huh. that they took from and us. Their money. And we have every right to do that. That money belongs to the party. But then you are That's not why I said not Dudujan, not Tombong. If they give it to the party, no, we listen. will announce it and it will go to the party's but account. Listen, listen, if you're yes. looking for that kind that your money, you should you you should look for it through legal means, not to go to the president and say, if you want the APRC, you have, four, no. you have to give us four million, no. as the lady claimed. The, the means that they themselves used was not legal. They used force, and they took it from us. Oh. The Jane Commission report came, no mention of our vehicles and our accounts, which means it was not a legal procedure. Mm. So if you go through a legal procedure, in the report it's not mentioned, what other steps are you going to take? We, we engage lawyers so, so, and legal experts. So, they are giving us advice. So based on their advices, we're following those channels. This so is the this so, is the so you negotiate with the, yes, the four million. It's a negotiation, and again, it's not a matter of must or force. We're using diplomatic means, peaceful means to negotiate. If they refuse, we have no option. We cannot force it our way. People must understand that. So when people go to Facebook Live and say whatever they want, they are entitled to it. But is it the reality? No. If they had engaged me or somebody else, they would tell them what we're doing. But like I said, they want to know. They're not getting information. They think going public will reduce us to their levels. We'll come out and talk. Now finally, we don't function that way. And we will never function that finally, way. Finally, yes. doesn't all this suggest that uh, in your rapprochement with Barrow uh, may not be popular among some of your membership? 
And if you insist on, on reaching any deal with Barrow, you may risk losing some of your members who doesn't want you to have anything to do with Barrow until, unless he, he actually, uh, I mean, provide them something that they are impressed with. Like, again, before I respond to that, like people are saying we are mortgaging the party, we are selling the party. Nobody can sell a political party. Let me make that clear. Anybody who knows politics will never mention such. How can we sell a party? Do we own the people? No. Are we giving them monthly wages or weekly? No. And it's type no. If I made a choice to leave APRC and go to another party, who, who can I take with me? Nobody. I don't own anybody. If I leave my position, somebody else is taking over. If this executive have to resign or in one way or the other, they say they cannot no longer stay at the affairs of the party, other people are coming to take over from them. So how do you sell a political party? That is definitely baseless. Yeah. I have never seen that happen nowhere in the world. You can say a party has ceased to exist and members will find their way and look for what to do. An example today, for instance, PPP, they are working with the incumbent. They're supporting an alliance sort of. In case they happen to have a fracas or their part ways, are they leaving their party with him? No, they're going with their party. So nobody sells a political party. And the people being the executive, they don't own the party. People entrust them to position and they're working to serve the people. So I want to clarify the alleging that we are going to sell the party. That is definitely baseless. And it shows the lack of maturity in politics. Nobody can sell any political party. Sitting I left, I came in. So others, they left their position, others occupy it. So if I go today, somebody is taking my place. Am I selling APRC? I don't have the power, we don't have the authority to sell this party. So those are just allegations out of anger. And all that they're saying, they cannot prove it. Definitely, I challenge any one of them to, to, prove, to prove this allegation. We're not selling the party, we're not asking Barrow to give us money. Is the money in our accounts we're claiming? We have every right to do that. So that's four million. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Luruja, mm. Deputy Spokesman of the APRC, thank you very much for sharing your views with us on the brunch. Mm. We will be back with uh, a look at the first day of the activities of the Electoral Commission as we prepare for the election circle, that is the voter registration. Plus, we will wrap up in our own way 871 days of hearings of the truth and reconciliation reparation and reconciliation commission there are too many hours there <laughs> when we come back after this break we live in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. InnovaRex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship, Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve. I got it. 
Tumbiri sani karta chibiri reu mifi IEC Gana abunye ye ba ne besi nyi tana Ngiri bindu Purmuna am karta ote Mwode nyar fuki fan ak jirom nyenen chweri me Be fuki fan ak be na chweri julai chi at menyu neka ni Tahna be National Council for Civic Education NCCE Nyoy fatele askanu yeb Ne bindu ngiri muna sani karta Lu am solo la ngiri muna hotel kila doi comme ni ko leralé ci fanna bi ñoo wax section 39 ci téré loi bi nga xamné mom la réew mi di doxé ak it waru galla ak yelléf ci képp ko xamné do mi réew mi nga té yello ko ci ko lolu nak NCCI ñoo di hirtal képp ko xamné do mi réew mi nga té mëna sanni carte na nga fexé bokk ci lu am solo li ndax té modi fondo mo ngi nga xamné modi sanni carte bu jaar yo NCCI ño di xamal askan wi ne ngir muna am carte hôte ci bind bi ño dekmal ni da nga wara woné fer ndey set wéc yi woné né do mi gambia nga comme niñ ko léralé nak ci fanna bi ño wax section 12 ci loi sanni carte rewmi té nak niñ ko wara woné rek modi nga woné yi ño lim ci ni benn ci ñom sa kayti juddu wala sa id card wala sa passeport wala keyit bu or bu baye ko ci alkali dikk bi wala chef bi kom ka nak gambia nge wajal xew xew bu am solo bi ba legi ncc yi ñu nge fateli ñep ne ñu moytandiku bep cadeau wala jef bo xamne dina wara muna jur fitna te nak ñu hirtal askan wi ne neñu fexé jamono joju yeb ñu fexé dal ak jamm am ci jamono joju te nak fepp fuñ gis ne fitna fa ekate ko ñu yegal ko ñi nga xamne ñom lañ ko wara yegal ñu mën ko safaral ndax te fitna mom andul ak loi rewmi sa carte moy sa cadeau kon nak bindu len ngir sanni carte te tanna bu baax ki ño sanni cadeau gi nak mu ngi baye ko ci ncci ci ndimbali undp Welcome back to the brunch on Kerfatu Live, the Islaminja. Now, continuing our program, the Independent Electoral Commission this morning started the activities they've uh, assigned themselves uh, in the election calendar beginning this year until 2022. Of course, the presidential elections in December is the first among those elections going to happen. So this morning, all Gambians within 18 years of age have opportunity until June the 4th, I believe, 
to obtain a voters registration cards to be able to vote in those elections. Now, our team in Kerfatu have been out and about. Reporter Landing Sise was in the Bakao and Joshua constituencies. And editor Mustafa Sise was, I guess, in Farato, which I believe is uh, Brikamanov yes, or Combo South. Combo South. Now, sure. now let's begin mm -hmm. with uh, Landing. What have you found in Bakao? Um, thank you so much, uh, Cham. Uh, Bakao, we found a very interesting situation there. Um, first, the first polling station, uh, registration center that we uh, visited, um, we just, you know, met the people, uh, the IEC staff, regist the registration staff, mm. you know, uh, pack, uh, uh, arranging their material there. Mm. But we found less than 10 people who are there to register, the, uh, register for the voter's card. Mm. So okay. the... For that, that was the first constituent in the Bakau Farokono. Okay. And then the second one uh, is uh, the Bakau Community uh, Center. center. Yeah. Um, there, we found less than 10 people for who, who were there to register. register. But the, the, the supervisor there, you know, um, raised a concern of, you know, logistic problem. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the table that they were even using, mm -hmm. I have to suggest to them that, you know, they can bring a cement block to put it up on the table so that they, their, their laptop can be on top of this main block and then the people who are there to register can have a comfortable uh, place to sit so that you know the camera can be you know the webcam that they are using to yeah. snap them mm. for their voters card can be stable and then can be balanced as well but the main concern there is the low turnout of people to register that's mm. a situation uh, that, that, that's another issue in uh Bacau right now and maybe too don't you have the feeling that maybe it's just too early um in the day that was early morning you talk about isn't it yeah that's what one of the supervisors told me he said maybe it is early that's why but you know um joe 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 Colley, the yeah. iec vice chairman you know said you know gambians have a sin uh, the the coming late syndrome. syndrome so maybe they are waiting for last minute so that you know they can come and register but so far so good the the the, the registration center with the highest number mm. was uh, is is, is uh, at this place Joshua. um Joshua. Okay. Joshua new Joshua Bantaba mm -hmm. where the vice chairman of IEC registered yeah they have the largest number of people registering and I'm, there is the pl only place i've seen a lot of youths coming out to register okay you managed to talk to i guess uh both the electoral officers and people who come to register i guess yes and then the agent of uh different political, political parties, parties were there also. yes uh, but it is also uh interesting to note that you know all the pool uh, registration centers that we visited mm. is only APRC, mm. NPP, and UDP. So all the so, political so parties, uh, where they, they, they have no representative there. So I don't know whether it's an agreement from no. the political parties or not. Because no, I, I asked it, Joe... It may have to do with uh, strength also. Because it's, it's, it's not very strange. Even in real elections, you kind of, some parties cannot put up personnel in all the centers because of their strength or their... The logistical uh, uh, capacity they, they may be faced, the pro logistical problems they may be facing. So, mm -hmm. I hope and I know that the, as far as the opposition politicians, political parties are concerned, APRC, UDP, and is it GDC you talk about? No, GDC is not there. It's only APRC, UDP, NPP. and NPP. Yeah. These are the only three political parties from Bakau uh, registration centers to Joshua. to Joshua. Maybe they are the ones who have the capacity. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, Mustafa, Sisi, you've been about in Farato, like I said. What did you? How was it? How did it go? Yeah, uh, interesting. Uh, uh, good day to everyone mm -hmm. here. And I have to start by apologizing to my young daughter. I came late last night, and this morning too, I woke up early <laughs> without her seeing me. So, <laughs> and, uh, so on top of that, it was an, a different and interesting scene in Farato. Mm -hmm. So I was at the, the the registration center called Farato Mosque, just where they usually. Mm -hmm. uh, observe this eat prayers okay uh, 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 exactly five minutes past seven a.m in the morning so i had early. found people about 100 people were queuing there 100 people are yes. already there already about 100 people already there waiting for the registration staff mm -hmm. and just a few minutes later i saw their vehicle dropped in mm -hmm. and they started setting up after the setup 
force that you have while they were setting up you know the arrival was continuing people were coming in and then after they are set up they started registration so it, most importantly you have uh, elders in Farah uh, 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 they, w their attitude is word of commendation because they they set how oh, they lead by example the Alcalo was on the ground uh, the, the lady they have a lady Alcalo she was yes, on the ground lady she has a team of council of elders who are there to certify people without the, oh, doc really? the other documents so there. she says the Alcalo has already gone to, to work with uh, for looking for possible attestations absolutely because okay. yeah yeah because the alcalo was there and then this team of council of elders were there in case someone doesn't have the birth certificate yes. or the id card or the the passport uh -huh. those people could and a little after you know the, the, the team had had sat down yeah. i saw people approaching them mm -hmm. and i asked them what were they doing there they told me that they are without either ID card, birth certificate, or passport. Mm -hmm. But they are, they are natives of Faraton, citizens of, of course of the Gambia. And they are Kahlo and those elders will test, will test, Fine. Will yes. test So that. they were going, you know, under, I would call it a vigorous, you know, process of, you know, accreditation because yeah. they had to be asked other things. And then before mm -hmm. they, they were asserted, there are certain things that needs to, needs to be in place. In fact, I remember the Alcalo telling them that if any one of you should yeah. certify someone who is not yeah. a citizen of the Gambia, anything yeah. that comes out of it tomorrow, you, you, you will be held responsible wow she told them that quite a good example so, and a little while i saw the imam walked in in yes, his robe the imam yes the imam baba she said also walked in and he also had his people around him okay so i asked him imam ah in fact he said many view this as a political agenda why are you here she, he told me no son this is not about politics mm. but this is about national development okay so therefore everybody should come and take up a stake because this trickles down on our life it has effect on our life yeah. and he went further to ask or to you know ask people who are not citizens to refer uh -huh. refrain from from trying registering to, yeah. from trying to register yeah. and interestingly after the he said that one i i i noticed one you know you one know person what? was yeah. on the ground mm. who had tendered an identity card of an, another nation which i wouldn't name here wow. of another you nation interesting yes yeah. interesting but uh, there were some group of youth who were there okay i didn't notice them initially yeah. these are age mates of mine because i grew up in far i was there since mm -hmm. uh about 16 going to 17 that's when i went there mm -hmm. i have still been there still now mm -hmm. so these are the people who are just trying to observe those who are, and they noticed this man mm -hmm. had an id card of another nation wow. they engage him on a personal level to tell him no you don't have to come here he insisted they let him went to the elders and he was rejected rejected until the time i left i do not know what transpired after yeah. my departure yeah but from 705 mm -hmm. to 9 30 that was what, what the atmosphere there it's a good example from farato you, yeah, you saw yeah. all the stakeholders at work did you observe the uh, political party representatives too yes i did but none of them were, were on the ground there <laughs> we're in there then. not even the observers they wouldn't arrive perhaps not even the observers ah, you fantastic, were there bro. yes sir. I, I i made uh, some efforts to talk to the leader of the team there but he wasn't comfortable talking to me ah, so yes. he referred me to talk to the commissioner who was all <laughs> along at the you know the regional office regional too which so. i couldn't access because i had to come here and give some updates just to Ta add on what yeah. uh, Mustafa was saying, like having some youth observing. Yeah. Uh, Bakau also, I, I met two uh, young mm. men, you mm. know, they were there. They mm. said their registration center is around the stadium. Okay. But they walk from around that end yeah. up to New Joshua Lower Basic oh, yeah. to just come and observe mm. so that if they see anybody who wants to register and the person is a foreigner, foreigner, they can ask that person or report that particular person mm -hmm. or re uh, deny that particular person Passing from, from registering. registering. I've seen that as well. And sure. then talking about you know people taking responsibility of voting um there is this old man uh, old woman who is who may be around 80s mm -hmm. you know with her crutches mm -hmm. walk from newtown mm -hmm and up to the where, where, where the registration center yeah. to come and register and uh, there is this man who in fact helped her mm -hmm. to come and you know mm -hmm. register. register so when i approach her and i ask her um what exactly transpired her to come and register mm -hmm. what she told me is that she is a citizen of gambia and if she didn't register she will she might regret yeah. come december 4th election ah, because so, they, somebody might win the election that mm -hmm. she doesn't want what? To be the next president so you know she calls on the gambian populace to come out and vote in uh, and register with in large numbers uh thankfully she was among uh, others you spoke you've spoken to and now we will go stretch to watch some of those uh, videos from the registration centers
Hello viewers and, and warm welcome to Cat Fatu. As you may be aware, one of the most talked about issues in the country for the past three to five months and one of the most crucial stage in any country's electoral process starts today, which is the voter registration. This is one of the most important stage in electoral process. Electoral experts has described this stage as the most important stage in electoral process. And today, we are going to visit various registration centers in the country to see how people are turning up in numbers to register. Isa, why is it so important for you to come and get a voter's card today? Um, because I guess if there is anything a politician would listen to, it would be uh, the votes of its people. We need to send them a message. Okay. So what message do you have for young people out there who are sitting without coming to register? Um, I'll tell you guys to register and to vote because you guys need to increase the voter turnout. That alone is a message to every politician and also it improves the democracy of a country. Because <laughs> Because <laughs> Because Lulumoisa so we see the Nahari, but as Kajak Mola Mola Fayal Sagache. My name is Musa Kijara. I am the team supervisor. Lati Kuna Jamon here. Lati Kuna Iringa Jamos. So far, so good. How is the process of registering people going on? Yeah, actually, the process is going fine. The only thing is the turnout is uh, seems to be very low. But as we are going, I think that maybe before the end of the day, we will have people who are coming to register with us here. But at the moment, everything is going normal and smooth. So we don't experience any problem from nobody. And uh, even my team are very cooperative and uh, everything is going fine. So, but uh, the only thing is the turnout of the people. It's not oh, very high. But I think that maybe before the end of the day, we will have uh, more people than this. Okay. Um, do you have uh, people who are here, want, uh, they, they want to register, but they did not have uh, valid documents and then they request for the attestation form to go and fill? Uh, yeah, actually, we, we, we are having that. Because actually, uh, according to IEC, the valid document that they say, if the individual is not with that in position, then you will come here and ask for attestation. So we will give the person attestation that he will go to the alcali, then they will fill the form there, authenticate it, then after they will come back here with him. So, so far I think I have almost four to five with me here. All these things are attestations. And I knew those people are here. But the validation of their documentation is expired. So we cannot just keep that. So it's better for them to have attestation from us, go back to alcali, then they will fill it there, authenticate it and come back here. Then we can give them the my name is Al Haji Basiru Gasama. I am here for this voters registration 2021 for the general election of December 4th. What is your role here? My role, I'm an agent verifying things 
for NPP. You have other two agents here from UDP and APRC. I didn't see the other parties their agent has yet, but as far as we are here, we are one. It's opinions. They are different, but that should not create problems with us. I'm an elder, and all these two agents, we are not in the same party. We talk to each other, and we are doing our job peacefully. Because the end of the day, after the registration, we are one. We married each other, we buried each other. Politics should not divide us. No? I am wishing everybody to maintain the peace and tranquility here. All the rules here is finally endorsed by the IEC officers. So we are under them. We are just here for our parties. Mala City Juf from Newtown. Yeah, Taimom Namanyon Pru represent APRC as an agent. Susum Libi. Okay, Tay Lumataha Joglo Moy Ne Gambia be more Tama Jok. Pru Dimbala Smawa Gambeni, Nuni Joge, Yumuna Dimbala Suni Reumi, Pru Numuna Tana, Hama, President Bubah, Kohamena of Numuna Yobu Reu Bubah. So Mansuma Wahbimo Moy Duguda Bubah, Wa Mankai Lumai Wareg, the Grim Sun Kilifai, Ag the Grim Hama. Sun Andi Jama Egg you know you regular Muna Wadiwa. Wow. Te Tamit Wow Libi Nekune Pru Lo Hamene, then you fi pru ni he hande, then you pru no hamene, dun you dohale sun de kabi gambe be prunu me deme. Hanga. Si peaceful we my name is Sidi Ture. I'm here in order uh as a party agent UDP. Yeah, we are we are here to you know make sure that uh, people to come out you know and register. And I see you know they already made their implements their laws that you know any Gambian who have a Gambian ID card you know and passport, birth certificate you know you have the right you know to come and register. Yeah. If anyone comes here without the valid uh, documents. Uh, would you people protest to stop that particular person from registering? Yeah, that's that is our role. You know, that's why you know our party uh, brought us here, so that you know anybody that come here with invalid you know documents, you should not you know uh, register here. Yeah, because it's against you know the rules of this country, and we 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 will fight you know that to the end of. To the uh, to the to the uh, bottoms of you know everything because it's, it's it seems like you know you are not a Gambian because if you are a Gambian you have to come with you know a value you know documents. Yeah, I'm Joseph Kuli, um, Vice Chairman IEC. Um, I came to register to get my voter card. Um, originally, I'm. Um, you know, I'm a native of Joshua. This was uh, where I was born. This is where I was born. Mm. As the vice chair of the Independent Electoral Commission, so far so good. How do you see the process of registration? Uh, it, it's 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 going on smoothly. Uh, of course, this is the first day, you know, treating problems here and there. But so far, um, we're getting there. You know. From now on to the week, um, uh, the week, um, I'm sure we'll be able to stabilize. Yeah, of course, you know, the, today is the first day, you know, not logistical problems, but maybe one or two other issues. But I think apart from that, uh, we're moving, we're moving on well. You see, I, it took me just about between three, four, five minutes, I'm done with my, <laughs> I'm done with my card. So the process is, uh, is, is um, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've seen certain people come in here without uh, requirement documents, and then the the people registering them will give them an attestation form for them to take it to the alcalo. So, how would these people uh, uh, ascertain that you know they didn't go and give the form to another person to fill it to them uh, for them instead of the alcalo? No, it's the alcalo because, like as I 
uh, here I know because this is my locality. I know this is the Alcalos compound. This is Alcalos compound. You know the Alcalo is just happened that he is around here. You know we have uh, we have some other centers you know within Joshua. So he cannot be at all places. So he has to be at his locality, his his place, so that at least anybody who has an issue because you know we used to have problems with attestation so that's why now we designed you know we designed the form you know we designed the form so you if you don't have the the the, the, the other three documents uh, you go you come the registration team will give you and then you go so once the alcalo signs and stamps it then you come back and then get your voter scan and sites of uh, voter registration centers visited by Kerfatu crew this morning. Now, we continue the program. After 871 days and well over 300 witnesses, some of them, of course, telling harrowing revelations of death, torture, enforced disappearances, and even illegal detentions. The Truth, Reconciliation and Reparation Commission TRRC public sessions are now over. The Commission last night bids the nation farewell with its own conviction that, of course, the Gambia under Yaya Jame was nothing to be proud about when it comes to human rights and the protection of life and dignity of citizens. Because, of course, most of those events were state sanctioned torture and, in some cases, assassinations. Now, opinions may be divided, but uh, it doesn't change the fact that people got killed, imprisoned, tortured, and even disappeared on the Jambe. Now, we have in the studio Esa Jalo, who served in the commission as a media consultant. Uh, and we will also have an opportunity to, to listen again to some of the 
uh, parting shots of uh, lead council Esa Mbai Fal, who gave a summary of their activities of the last three years. Isa, welcome to the branch. Thank you, Congratulations first uh, for really having uh, what I would call really a mammoth patience to go over all these testimonies, transcribing, going through testimonies, and really having a successful public session. How, when you reflect back, has been the work of the TRRC? Oh, thank you, Lord. I need to just say this. I am director of communications. I'm not the media uh, council. All right, whatever you... Um, yes, the public face of the TRRC is what has ended last week. Mm -hmm. And we've all seen what has happened there. It, is, it has been in the public view. Mm -hmm. The testimony from victims, the perpetrators, to adversely mentioned people, as well as to expert witnesses who had them all. Mm -hmm. And that has given us a context as to the extent of the human rights violations that occurred in this country during the um, 15 years of... Yes, I, I would have to start again, sorry. <laughs> yes. But like, um, I am the Director of Communications for the TRRC instead of a media consultant. Mm. Like I said, um, the TRRC's public face has ended. That is the, the hearings where witnesses come and testify. And during this period, as you say, in the 871 days, we have got precisely 392 witnesses who appeared before the Commission. And um, the hearings actually give us a context as to the extent of human rights violations that occurred in this country during the past 22 years of Yaya Jame's regime. And among those are unlawful disappearances, arbitrary arrests, torture, unlawful killings. These are the things that we have uncovered um, in, the, in, in the public view and what had happened behind the, um, the scenes as well. Like the TRRC had um, uh, the public hearing as well as when witnesses come and they are unidentified and witnesses who also testify in camera yes. so um this is this actually gave us uh, an overview mm -hmm. of the, the 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 human rights violations that occurred in this country and based on that mm -hmm. that is what the recommendations are going to uh, be focused on um as you mentioned um the the beginning of the trrc it's from the statement taking um uh, st uh, state mm -hmm and from there to the testimony if one is called. I would want to mention here that the number of statements that came into TRRC, including um, uh, perpetrators, victims, and expert witnesses, amounted to close to 2,000 2000 st statements. statements. As we speak now, it is yeah. over 1,600, mm -hmm. and still these statements are being inputted in the database, so I cannot give you the... the so the you have well over 1,000 statements. Statements, yes, but well over 1,000. 392 actually yes. ended up uh, justifying publicly. Exactly, because the TRRC came up with a work plan and divided its hearings into themes. Mm. If you know um, the July yes. 1994 coup mm -hmm. and all the other things that come, including the media, you being part of that who testified. Yeah. So they picked on oh. some of these testimonies and, and then allowed us to, to testify. Ice. But that doesn't necessarily mean that if you didn't testify, then the TRRC is not going to think about you. Yeah. The most important thing is your statement. Mm -hmm. If that is in there, that means that TRRC have heard you. They've yeah. got your uh, what, what, what you've got to complain. Because one, people came in to complain. Yeah. And others were asked to come and answer to allegations, allegations that were, that were against made them. against them. Yeah. And other people were consulted to give us a background, mm -hmm. an idea as to how did this happen? For example, if so you look at... those were the kind of witnesses. They are witnesses. Yeah. And other people, yes, yeah, witnesses were there. They were other expert witnesses. For exactly. example, when we were doing the hearings on the HIV, mm -hmm. doctors were brought in to actually tell us why it is not true that somebody can cure AIDS. AIDS. So okay. that is the context. They Very gave good. us all of that. Yeah. So based on the testimonies that we have, mm -hmm. we know that all but one person mm -hmm. um, said that they have not been cured. Mm -hmm. The person who said he has been cured never appeared on, uh, to, to, to the commission. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the expert witnesses who came gave the legal team, the investigators, an idea yeah. as to how this is, it is impossible mm -hmm. for HIV to be treated. So this is just a context of all of them. Mm -hmm. What is happening now is the, the statements are being inputted into the database. Mm -hmm. uh, these statements are being analyzed. There are people who are there specifically mm -hmm. who summarize these statements. And there are people also who have... There are, the staff have been reduced, but some people have been added onto the legal team mm -hmm. so that there will be people who are going to review these, analyze them, and then form an opinion mm -hmm. on, on these things. And that is going to be forwarded to the legal team where 
um, uh, decisions are going to be as to what would happen. We also have a consultant who has been brought in there, funded by the UNDP, um, who is Gambian, um, who would also look at that, that report in collaboration with the legal team. And after that, we also have an external consultant mm. who is there who is going to look at the entire report mm. and then from there then the chairman and the commission will sit down and look at it and say okay this is what we have agreed um, as our recommendation before it is forwarded to the president and so a whole lot of system is going and that is on. until when uh, well we are expecting that to finish by the end of july um i know that it is going to be difficult but um work has been intensified as we speak now the team are working every day and they, they work beyond uh, the normal working hours. Um, so this is, this is ongoing. Um, like I said, the testimonies also, I didn't mention that, they are each being transcribed. So 392 statements, are, uh, testimonies are being transcribed mm -hmm. and they are proofread before anything is being done. All of those things are also going to be published. So researchers be ready. You're going to have a host of documents that you're going to sift through. Okay. Now, let's go by the its own mandate and mission. Yes. Truth, reconciliation, and reparation yes how much truth let's start with t first the first t the first letter how much truth has been discovered how much would be difficult to say but a lot of truth has been discovered um you will discover that um during all these testimonies um witnesses came in and they spoke the truth mainly the victims and some uh, perpetrators or adversely mentioned people also came out and spoke what appeared to be the truth and there are other people who came and lied. These include victims, all right? But you will, it, will be, it is difficult to actually um, distinguish what is a lie as to actually um, intending to mislead. Mm. Or is it this, that's something that somebody formed and he said, and think that is the truth. Some, some of these things happen because some of these violations occurred a long time. When people say a lot of things, sometimes it appears to be the truth to you, mm. when in the actual fact, it is not the truth. I see. But then there are people who also witness things happen and they were able to come in and say no this is what exactly had happened we've had x y and z say something but it didn't happen this way but it happened in the other way um there are other people who came and tried to rectify certain um uh, incidents which actually just provided context as to the the investigation but they may not have any dimension or bearing on the uh, final outcome you the the trc's mandate is to investigate human rights violations mm. If Lamin Champ comes in there and claims that he was the uh, uh, chairman of the VDC at a certain time, or he actually formed a certain organization, and which wasn't true, mm. uh, that might be okay, it's not true, but that has no bearing on human rights, human rights violations. Rights. We've got people who called in and said, say, oh, this guy said he belongs to a certain kind of a group, or what, but that has never been the truth, and all what not. So, some of these things we know, okay, this is not true, but mm. actually it has no bearing, bearing on the human rights violations. Human rights violations. Okay. And some of the things that people claim are crimes. Mm -hmm. If crimes occur, mm -hmm. it is the responsibility of the government to prosecute mm -hmm. or to investigate mm -hmm. using the laws of the land mm -hmm. so that that person who committed that crime mm -hmm. is brought to book. But if that person commits a crime and that person has not been put through the legal system of the country, instead something else has been done to him, then that person's rights have been violated mm -hmm. by the people who are supposed to protect his rights. Right. Difficult as it is, if you yeah. catch a TV in your house, you are not allowed to beat the beat thief. The thief. You are allowed to beat the now. Exactly. Good. So, how reconciled then are the people, the other are after the T? Well, um, we have had some form of reconciliation efforts that we tried. Mm -hmm. Nationally, it is still a problem. Um, it is still a problem because certain people do not want to reconcile because they actually are putting in conditions that are going to be difficult okay. to reconcile. All right. You've interviewed somebody here, and then those people are actually saying that the yeah, Ajame must come back to this country and live a life that he wants to live and all what not. Mm. I am telling you that cannot be acceptable to the victims. Mm. That cannot be acceptable mm. because as we speak now, we know over 200 people lost their lives yes. under the watch of his regime. Mm -hmm. So to say that person has to come and live a life like those people that he hurt, mm -hmm. that is absolutely not going to be possible. So that is going to be a barrier for reconciliation for other people. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a number of victims who are really, really concerned as to what is going to happen after all of this. Mm -hmm. There are critics of the TRRC who are saying that this is going to be a complete waste of time. Exactly. Because if all of these things have come to light mm -hmm. and nothing happened to those people who have actually perpetrated these crimes, mm -hmm. that is going to be a problem. So I wouldn't say that that part of reconciliation is there. 
Our team have tried to, to organize some reconciliation efforts between people, mm -hmm. communities as well. We've done one between the people of Jambur and the perpetrators. And among the people of Jambur themselves, we've done that. That has not come out uh, mm -hmm. in the public because they requested not to not put that in, in, in public. Mm -hmm. we, are, we have done people to people. We've seen those things have been broken where perpetrators have actually requested us mm -hmm. to facilitate reconciliation with their victims and the victims agreed to do that and that have been facilitated because that is a mandate of the TRRC. Mm -hmm. If the victim accepts mm -hmm. to reconcile, yeah. that is going to happen. The TRRC has to do that. If the TRRC didn't do that, then that means the TRRC did not actually do what it is supposed to be doing. So we have had those things uh, where um, victims and perpetrators agreed to reconcile. But that notwithstanding doesn't remove the crimes that that perpetrator, have, uh, that perpetrator has actually um, committed. So people need to distinguish that. So that effort is being done. As we speak now, our team is in Sikunda. Sikunda in Jara. Sikunda in Jara trying to put forward what the request that was done by the then the chief of Jara mm -hmm. as to what he had uh, done to the people of Jara, whether there's going to be a possibility of reconciliation. Okay. I don't know that result, uh, that result yet because the team is there. They're going to come back and with a feedback from the people who felt that they have their rights have been violated. Okay. If they agree to meet with the chief, we will facilitate that as well. Wow. So that is ongoing. Okay. You know, the other part is reparations. That's what I'm coming. The order are yes. reparations. What is the stage of rep we understand? Of course, you got government. You got 50 million dollars from the government uh, not long ago to do the well, the most immediate uh, uh, you know, assistance to victims. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's the form of reparation. But reparation. But many people keep asking when and how and what are the policies um, of uh, the major reparations, monetary reparations. Who qualified? What as what is the formula? Who is to get what? What categories? Nothing has been not much has been said about that. People want to know what. So what is the state? Well, the, there is there are regulations that have been published as to how they are okay. going to arrive at that. Okay. But who gets what has not been determined yet because mm -hmm. for now mm -hmm. the investigations and everything has not been done because it is the final part of that report. And the recommendations will also come out with that. Mm -hmm. You know to determine those things. Nonetheless, mm -hmm. there has been interim reparations that have been going on. Mm -hmm. The people who have been sick have been suffering or whose children have not been able to go to school or what the TRRC is actually taking care of that. There was part of an interim reparation or uh, an assistance that had been coming from the international community. For example, the UNDP had the UN Transitional Justice Project has been funding TRRC activities, mm -hmm. but the UN wouldn't fund... Um, Reparations. reparations. That Compensations. Is a, yeah, they would not do that. They would not fund that. What the UN uh, system has been doing is to help in assisting victims to be able to come and give their statements and uh, so that they don't have difficulties. For example, if you live in Woolley and you want to come here and give your statement. If you travel, we provide the tra transportation. If you spend the night here, we make sure that you have money that will allow you to live somewhere mm -hmm. um, and privately to be able to uh, come to the TRC. Okay. So we have that. Government has given us $50 million. Mm -hmm. That $50 million, part of it has already been spent. On interim, interim, on interim reparations. Mm -hmm. Close to 25% of that has gone. Okay. Uh, you remember that we have sent people to Turkey. Mm -hmm and to Dakar for treatment. Yeah, the Turkish government actually funded mm -hmm. the treatment part of it. That okay. means the treatment is free. Okay. But all other things all surrounding trans, that, air tickets and, tickets uh, and, and accommodation, then accommodation to, yeah, tickets also there escorts. are yeah, tickets also there are people who actually help. The GPA mm -hmm. help in, in, in funding part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Papa Yusuf Njai of the Unique Group also okay. fund part of that. Oh. And in fact, Papa Yusuf Njai is continuing to fund part of the treatment of uh, another victim another that victim. is still there. So he's oh, done tremendously well in doing that. But the TRRC is footing the bill of the rest. Okay. And you know those victims, they wouldn't be left alone. If a victim goes in there is sick, that person has to be escorted by yeah. a, relative. a relative. And also TRRC has to have a representative there to make sure that things are going with all the logistics nice. that are being done. Okay. So all that costs money. So a lot of money, uh, to be precise, up to the time that I had been finding out about the figures, up to $11.5 million that they that have been spent, spent on that. that 50 million. Out of that 50 but million. It might be even more. How much is the commission projecting that uh, would be needed to compensate the, 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 the lot of people who have been, whose relatives have been murdered, who have been tortured, 
the illegal detention sorted. I'm sure the, you shared the determination as to what category will get what has not been divided. Yeah. If you estimate, how much money do you think the government should come forward? Well, um, the government had promised to come with an extra $50 million, yeah. an extra, extra $50, $50 million. million, that has been said. Yeah. But what the reparations committee is doing now, they are trying to raise funds. Okay. And they wanted to raise funds of up to $200 million. Up to $200 million. Yeah, or even more than that, if, I, if, I, if, I, didn't, if I didn't forget. Yeah. That drive has been going, people well, have how been... How do they expect to mobilize that? They That's are doing that, they have written to people, they have written to institutions to, to, to help. Mm. That is being done. And then uh, they are actually planning to go on to all of these media houses to try to, to help facilitate that, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, as we speak, that was one program that was done on West Coast Radio with mm -hmm. the chair of the reparations committee, that is the deputy chair of the TRRC has been doing that. And also other um, organizations, other media institutions have been lined up so that we can go there and start doing this. It is not government's responsibility. To do it that. is government's responsibility, but because TRRC also mm -hmm. um, wouldn't want to wait for government for all of that to I do, will try to they raise funds on, on its own. Oh, and that was why yeah. the diaspora engagement was also important, okay. because the UNDP wouldn't raise funds for us, or wouldn't give us money to give to people as reparations, reparations or compensation. Yes. Yeah. They were able to fund our team to mm -hmm. go there and look for reparations. I and see. a large chunk of money also came from the diaspora okay. and in that and that is still being done okay. so that wouldn't be enough mm -hmm. what government is going to be bringing we don't know we don't when know. and how mm -hmm. but because trrc the way, because the gamma terrorists is unique in the way that they have the right to give reparation, reparation. they wouldn't have to wait for government okay. so the money that we have remaining here yeah. before we pack up and go we will mm -hmm. have to pay all of that mm -hmm. For reparations yeah. and government wouldn't have to question us why we will have to determine who gets what and, okay. and how do we, we give it to them okay. so that is a mandate and that is being done fantastic now you s i mean um let's let's talk about uh, s uh, um, you talk about what next and a, a lot of people have uh, like you said in your distant there are people with you know denial perspectives of denial saying well, you know, these are mere allegations. Okay, this perhaps is not the best form of uh, seeking reconciliation, etc., etc. I mean, people you call in your commission call people who are undermining the TRRC. It, what do you? What is your response to those who are saying these are mere allegations? They were politically motivated to discredit the system that was here and the head of state that was here. Yeah, I think I think it is people who just didn't want to own up to the truth. Mm. For example, we know Chief Mane. Yes, we I know, know. I knew him. Well, yes. now I said new because I I know suddenly he's he's not alive. Yeah, I knew him very well. Yes, Competence. and we know he isn't here. Yes, and we have never seen him go into any court. Yes, where is he? Yeah, somebody you must explain for us. We we know Solo Sunday. Yes, we know he was arrested until 2016 yes. April. We saw him, and then we saw it. we saw where we picked him from. Yes, what else do we need to know again? Yes. You know, that these are just two examples I'm giving you. Yeah. You see, people who are saying that, yes. they need to sit with victims. Mm -hmm. They need to sit with people who have actually faced torture. Yeah. Uh, you, Myself. You clear example. It's like if somebody told me exactly. that, why would you yeah. go yeah. on national television yeah. and tell the whole world yeah. that you are stripped naked? You are made to do things that on, 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 on naturally you wouldn't do. Yes. Why would elderly people, yes. people like MC Cham, yeah. People like OJ, yeah. people like Bach Samba Jallo, yeah. why would they go on national television yeah. and say this was what has been done to me? So humiliating yeah, in front of TV. And, and you have people who actually did those, some of those acts exactly. themselves coming to say. Yes. That. Why would a jungler come and say, you know, we, we, we strangled him? You know, we, we, we dumped him here. And why would those junglers actually guide us, take us to a point and give us this is the area? that we, 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 we put these people in. We know what had happened on November 11, uh, for some of us who are, 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 are older. Yeah. You know, we have went, we, we've gone to Yundum. We have, we have excavated uh, remains. Skeletons. They have seen it. Those people have relatives. Five, six people were dumped in one grave. Even if those people have committed crimes, is that the way they were supposed to be treated? Yeah. So people who are in denial, yes. making allegations, yeah. they know in their conscience. You know, Com Commissioner Skinty said it yesterday very succinctly. Yeah. We have our conscience mm -hmm. and our ego. Yeah. And if our ego and our conscience start fighting, yeah. then we find it difficult to accept to the truth. Accept but we know that the 22 years of Jame mm -hmm. has not been rosy. Mm -hmm. It has been terrible for many people in this country. Well, and those people yeah. deserve the justice that they are craving for. Okay. 
like you said, some members of, of course, Jammes APRC party, like uh, Dudu Jaho just left here, admitted, yes, there were mistakes. But what they mistakes? think the whole uh, TRRC was created to politically, to be politically used to discredit the system even more necessary than, or even more, I mean, more than it's necessary. And the whole thing is just to score a political point against the APRC. I mean, that's see, how they see you it. See, I think even this though you bring practical, <laughs> practical yeah, you examples see, that nobody can dispute. Exactly. Let me, let, me, let me make this thing clear. You see, in the Gambia, people use the word politically mm -hmm. wrongly. Oh, yeah. You see, the life of a country is politics. You okay. cannot do anything mm -hmm. without politics. Whether you like politics or you don't like politics, it's politics. It yeah. is politics that, that, that govern the country. Okay. So anything that is being done, be it done to try to make things right, you correct. have to do it politically. politically. Because yeah. if you want to make it to be correct, you have to pass through parliament. They are politicians, they are elected by people. This is the life of a country. Politics. So people saying politically motivated or whatever yeah. things, these they are things that are being misused. They, mis yeah, they, mis they are being misused. They misplaced. We yeah. have um um uh ousted jamme through the ballot box mm -hmm. a new government came in they had made promises mm -hmm. before they came into power yes. they said we are going to investigate Investigates. now they are doing that they are fulfilling the promise that, that they have given to people yeah. this is a demand from people this is a demand from uh, victims mm -hmm. that actually some things have happened to us we want to know why mm -hmm. we want to know why they did this to us and we want to we want justice mm -hmm. We want the law to take its course. Mm -hmm. So if a government wants to implement that, mm -hmm. why would you say that that is politically? That, 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 that is supposed to be their business. Exactly. That is number one. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I forgot the other p aspect that you, that, that you brought in. Um, yeah. In terms yeah. of um, denying yes. um, the, de the denials, as I said, you know, people are fighting with their own egos, their conscience and their own egos. About, but we know that this is categorically clear. Absolutely. This is what had happened mm -hmm. uh, 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 in this country. Now, if somebody who is supposed to be leading the country to the promised land that he has promised us mm -hmm. of transparency, of accountability, probity. of probity. Mm -hmm. If that same person mm -hmm. is making people disappear, mm -hmm. is making people just, you know, whatever you do, mm -hmm. you face the consequence just arbitrarily like that. Mm -hmm. Why would we not have the right to tell the person, why did you do this and we are going to do X and Y, or the law is going to take its course because you've actually violated our rights. You've actually uh, 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 gone backwards to, 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 to actually uh, impose yourself in any means that you want. Mm -hmm. Now, people ask questions and say, well, we only talk about what the government has done to the people. Mm -hmm. But about what did they do? What did they do to, to the warrant that to happen to them? As exactly. if yeah. Chief Mane had done something so terrible mm -hmm. that he has to disappear. Has, yes. Even if somebody commits a crime, yeah. no matter how grave that crime is, mm -hmm. even if that person killed a human being and no, come to turn table... They said this kind of thing mostly about the Khartoum and Farafenye attack. Exactly, I'll come to that. They said those people killed Gambian National yeah. Army soldiers, so they shouldn't be glorified at the commission to be heroes, but they actually killed uh, yeah. soldiers. Nobody, yeah. nobody who commits a crime mm -hmm. should be celebrated. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah. Okay? There are people who would do that because they think that those people are fighting for their cause or whatever. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, if anybody who picks up a weapon against a sitting government, mm -hmm. that person has committed a crime. No doubt about that. Mm -hmm. But if that person has committed a crime, mm -hmm. that we have laws. Ah, that's right. That person has to be put through the laws of the land. Mm -hmm. If person picks up a, a gun and attacks government mm -hmm. and that person happened to be killed during that period, that means that that person has been killed trying to overthrow a government. Oh, right. So that cannot be investigated. What is going to be investigated is the aftermath of, aftermath that. of that. Why would you arrest other people, even yeah. if you arrest them and you suspect that they have been involved? You're talking about the 30th December. Exactly. Attack. I mean, the commission found it problematic or maybe sensitive in dealing with that because it because I mean it preceded the se that session or that little bit preceded was preceded by criticisms that okay you had a lead investigator who was uh, himself involved in that coup plot etc. But the commission has tried to say that they will deal with the human right matters and not the crime. Yeah. And like you said, people who are just well connected with the people who did the act and had no business or maybe no knowledge of it were arrested along like parents of. Yeah, uh, uh, of the perpetrators and suspects. Yeah, we know that. We know. We know that has been the norm. Mm. If you if you happen to be seen to be committing a crime in mm -hmm. the eyes of the government, mm -hmm. they would what they would do if they can't get hold of you, they'll go and get hold of other people. Exactly. 
You see? see. Even if you even if somebody mentions your name yeah. on a different context yeah. by somebody who they think has been committing a crime or is against the government, they go after you. Why did they come after you? That is an example. Right. You see, that is the norm, and that shouldn't be the way we live. If people commit crime, they should be taken to court, and the law must take its course where the law says should happen to them. Right. And this is why when we are doing our investigations on the prisons, nobody mentioned about the crimes that they have committed. Uh, but they have committed a crime, they are taken to prison, their welfare in the prison, they have rights. They have rights. That was what was being dealt. But nobody came and said, oh, okay, we think that you have been wrongly convicted, convicted. and all that. No, no. Okay. That has, the court has decided. The court has decided. You but know? what happened? How they should be kept? How they have been treated? That's so human th rights. That is the thing. So it is about human rights violations. It's not about investigating crimes or the investigating. The other research. thing is, uh, some people felt that they should have been called to the commission to testify because they have a given authority on a subject matter, but they were not invited, maybe because of political reasons or what. No, you see, I mean, um, the uh, the thing is, the team that we have. Mm -hmm. Um, our investigators, uh, I, I need to say this, our investigators are mainly serving Gambia police force officials. Serving police, police officers. officers. Okay. They have just been to TRRC on secondment. 99.9% oh, uh, of them. They are already professional investigators. They are professional investigators. Mm -hmm. And these people are young people. Mm -hmm. Mainly have not got any much connection to whatever had happened in the past. Most of the things have been happening here. These people were so young yeah. to even take part in take that. Part in so the investigators have been doing their best to try to investigate. And look, when investigators are looking into things, they will ask questions. Mm -hmm. They will invite people, they'll talk to them. Mm -hmm. They will also look at archives. Mm -hmm. They will look at open sources. Now, I mean, if you have said a lot of things in, in the open, mm -hmm. we get that and we know what you have said. Exactly. Why would, we wouldn't want to bring people to just because of their ego. Okay. Just because to also for them, what they are accusing us to score political points or yeah. to have a platform to come and say things that you are supposed to say. That is not going to be allowed. Because you know the type of person that you are even calling. I'm not saying that is the reason. Yes. This is my opinion. Yeah. I'm not saying this is, that is the reason. Yeah. But just look at it. Some of the people that people, they are claiming that TRRC should have called, mm -hmm. have said so much, mm -hmm. have reacted so much. Mm -hmm. And then if you have not been adversely mentioned yes. and you have said so much, we've looked at it and we've seen inconsistencies here and there, why would we be called? So you already discredited. We, it's discredited. <laughs> okay. So those are the things that, that might. And what about this presumption that, okay, you have heard from people, all right, who said they've, they've, they've undergone this and that. Why didn't you hear from Jamme? Yeah, yeah, Jamme. You have called people as recent as your last day, people in the UK through this thing. Why? Jamme sympathizers say, why didn't you allow Jamme uh, to have his say? Did you make any efforts to contact him? <sighs> I, I Did the TRRC know. do that? I, I wouldn't know, to be you honest. I, that, that information I don't have. But okay. let, me, let me express an opinion. Yeah. I wouldn't think, mm -hmm. if I were to decide that, say for example, I was the one to calling people, yeah. I wouldn't call him because one, mm. I would, the, the, the kind of things that we have investigated, I would prefer him to go to court and answer court court. and defend. Not, not to come to me, not to come to the RRC and start denying them all there. Ah, I, I would have, that what we have discovered, mm. you would have put that in the front of the courts mm. and ask him to Why? To why? Why did you think? For me, that, that's what I would think. Why do you think it would have been necessary for him to? Because he would end up, he would anyway end up in court. Ah, okay. Yeah, so, anyway, so, end up in court. So, so, yes, so you better him, not discuss the evidence. To, yeah, is to put all of this <laughs> there and put the allegations them in court. Because if he comes there, yeah. the commission, as far as our investigations are concerned, the mm. things that have been discovered that over two hundred people lost their lives. Yes, we cannot say, oh, okay, hey, Jamie has put a, a strong case, so we recommended amnesty. Ah. We cannot do that. <laughs> we, st we still recommended him to go to court. Mm. If it were me, mm. I don't need to call him. He just have to go and face the courts. That is my opinion. Okay, now let, let's talk about it. You, 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 the commission observed that about 300 to 200 people might have lost their lives through activities of people connected to Jammy. And his critic or his admirers are still saying, "We well, we haven't had anybody who said it's Jammy himself, you know, who took a gun and killed this person. So how can you say that uh, he's the one who sent these people, uh, you know, to kill people?" Yeah, when, 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 those when, kind when, of arguments. when 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 Barrow went to inaugurate some of those roads yeah. that were said to have been started during Jammes regime, yeah. the Senegambia Bridge included, yeah. they claimed that it is Jammes 
they claim it was James it project. James project. Did they see him hammering their <laughs> painting somewhere? <laughs> they didn't see him, isn't it? Analysis, yes. But they wanted that. Yeah. But you see, when a government comes in, yeah. they take over some liabilities uh, and, some and some assets. <laughs> and some assets. <laughs> so this is it. So if they have done something good up to a certain point, another government comes in, they take over, they'll claim part of that. Yeah. All right. So this this is this is the situation. So and, mm-hmm. they may not see him mm-hmm. to have done things physically, mm-hmm. or they may not have had him to say things um, verbally to mm-hmm. do these things. Mm-hmm. But he has a responsibility to make sure mm-hmm. that if something is has gone wrong mm-hmm. and accusations are fly, he has mm-hmm. the responsibility to make sure that is corrected. Mm-hmm. When the West African migrants disappeared here, mm-hmm. what happened? Nothing. Instead, there, kind, there, yes, <laughs> yes. There, there was a massive cover up. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. when Deda Hydera was killed, what did he say? <sighs> That's probably all I would say. That's exactly. Very unkind. So, very unkind. Yeah. So, if a head of state would do that, what do you expect? So, people who are saying that. He even actually, suggested Chief Mane might have gone on the back way. Exactly. Back way route. Yeah. So, we have seen massive efforts of the last time that we went to this tour mm-hmm. with the with the with the uh, commissioners mm-hmm. in Fony, you have seen where we went to mm-hmm. you have seen the extent of how they tried to do to cover up mm-hmm. the guy who was taken all the way to the riverside and shot it and left to die there mm-hmm. you know and, and you can see these kind of things happening yeah. who on earth will do this thing in fact all you know who on earth will do that thing in the gambia mm-hmm. and nothing is being said good and, and, and well, still with critics who said, well, well after all, uh, the whole intention and purpose of the TRS was to get to Jamme. You know, the, the, all you intended to do was to cl- gather evidence. It was only one man you wanted, and that is Jamme. Otherwise, they say, why did you leave the junglers who confessed to killing, and you didn't do anything with, to them, you know, immediately. You left them to uh, be there until the end of your recommendations. So people couldn't understand why do you leave junglers free who have confessed to multiple killings? Mm. TRS is mandate d- mm-hmm. is not to punish anybody. Mm. Th- it, there's nothing in our mandate to say that we have to punish somebody. So who's, who's, who's job? It is, is government's government? responsibility mm. to lock up mm. or to detain mm. based on the rule of law. What the TRRC is interested mm. is for everybody mm. that they are interested in mm. to come forward and help us find the truth. But after and the jungle has testified, they become yeah. heroes and stars to the TRRC itself. No, no, well, no, the TRRC the, didn't recommend the, the government uh, to leave them at least. No, the TRRC didn't say anything. All the TRRC had wanted was to talk to them. Mm-hmm. They talked to them based on conditions. Okay. All right? Mm-hmm. Those conditions were guaranteed by government. Come to the TRRC, okay. go and testify, yeah. and then for now, yeah. we'll be left alone until okay. when we are ready. I see. That is a deal between the junglers and the government, and, not the and TRRC. And others who refuse to do that are still kept, there still kept. until their fate is that, decided. That's it. That's it. I, I so see. that is not the TRRC, because the TRRC cannot lock up anybody. Yeah. You know, it is not even a proper court, mm-hmm. uh, let alone being able to, to, to lock somebody. You had mm-hmm. a dramatic, one dramatic uh, experience in June 2019 mm-hmm. when one of the witnesses refused to testify, claiming um, amnesty, which of course has been, you know, <laughs> we've been, we've been decided by the courts. That was quite dramatic, wasn't it? I'm talking about the Yanko Baturi case. Yeah, it was, it was, Apart it, from that, it was quite dramatic, but we know how that ended now. Yes. Um, but he was claiming, went to the well, courts, the and, courts and, uh, and, and the rest is history. Well. So since that, that is in the courts, I wouldn't be permitted to talk yes. about that anymore. Okay. But you see, that was a test for the TRS. It was a okay. test for our legal system in the gambia okay and that has been done the way it is supposed to be done mm-hmm. uh, it has been taken to court it has been contested it mm-hmm. went to the supreme court and a decision was made mm-hmm. trs is not interested in that mm-hmm. that, will con- that will continue as as it is but not notwithstanding mm-hmm. that theme mm-hmm. the way that 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 koro Sisa was killed mm-hmm. was investigated and trs was going to form an opinion on that based on mm-hmm. the um the, the evidence that that, that we have that's, that's yes good. All right, finally, before we move to the concluding remarks by the lead counsel, Esa Mbaifal, finally, uh, this is history already been made and will be made after all the works have been done. What, in one or two, in a few words, how did you find your time with the TRRC and what significant role has the commission played in the history of the Gambia? Well, for me personally, well, for the history of the Gambia, um, we have had things that we never thought we would have here. 
mm -hmm. we have had sorry mm -hmm. in this country mm -hmm. we have had rumors and those rumors were confirmed to us we have had we have heard about people mm -hmm. and we have seen them in their lowest um, uh, uh, form mm -hmm. we have seen people behaving in a manner mm -hmm. that we thought was right mm -hmm. and we have been made to understand that that is not the way for people to behave we have heard how government behaved in a way that it is unbelievable mm -hmm. we have seen how people have taken power to themselves because they know that they are associated to power mm -hmm. and use that power to abuse people we've seen that and we have learned along that this is a country that we have been on a track that we were not supposed to be in the first place. And this is something that a lot of people have now agreed that we need much more seriousness if we want this country to go forward. And this is why people are much more politically aware now. You've just uh, uh, been talking about the voter registration. You can see how people came out trying to make sure that things were being done. Nobody was mad enough to do that during the past 22 years to come down there and start finding out what is happening. Mm -hmm. Even if you want to do a research, you are locked up. Mm -hmm. Just a mere research. What had happened to Said Matija and the others? Mm -hmm. So this is a learning curve mm -hmm. for everybody in there. And this is somewhere we would need to have to change our attitudes as many people have said to be able to move this country forward. And we need to talk to our politicians. It is not just only enough mm -hmm. to go out there, talk to people and sing and dance and start attacking people. This is what you have said. This is what you wear. This is what you do. That is not going to take our country forward. What will take our country forward is programs. What is going to take our country forward is the truth. It is going to be a country that we will need to fight for a country that is corruption free. If you, that is going to be impossible. But we have to minimize corruption in this country. And that is one of our fundamental problems. And we need to adhere to what we claim to have believed mm -hmm. we claim that we are religious people christians and muslims mm -hmm. but we do not practically do these things in our lives and this is one of our problems for me personally i stumbled onto trrc mm -hmm. you know i left a job yeah. and i was invited to a party mm -hmm. and during that party i realized there's a vacancy and i applied for it and there couldn't be anything better than that you know, I never thought that I was going to work for the TRRC and I think that it has the best thing that has happened to me. I have worked with the most phenomenal individuals in this country. Mm. I'm really, really proud being part of this process to bring Jamme to account. So what next for you? Back into the newsroom? Hopefully, yeah. I am I'm a broadcaster okay. and I love broadcasting and this is where I want to be. I've right. been into many places, in, in, including teaching and all that, but I wanted to go back to broadcasting. Isa Jalo, Director of Communications at the TRRC. Thank you for now. But then we continue with TRRC matters to end the program. And that is the summary of the observations made by Lead Council Esa Mbaifal, whom, whom I must say really is perhaps, I told him in the field, that he probably is one of the most famous uh, person uh, in the Gambia today. And then I later said, well, Sometimes a famous man may not be that much popular. <laughs> but I can assure you that, uh, okay, most part of the population would equally consider you as famous and popular. Okay, let's hear from lead council Esa Maifal. And after him, well, we will, <laughs> we will end the program with him until we come back next week. Goodbye from Lila Min In 1994, a group of soldiers hijacked our democracy and suspended our constitution and made us believe that they were soldiers with a difference, that they are going to salvage this country and save it from rampant corruption, nepotism, and bring in transparency, accountability, and probity. And we embraced them, at least many of us, me including. And if we are all honest, most of us, the majority, embraced it. Because also, we were tired of the slow pace of development. We had a great democracy. We had one of the best civil services in the world. We had an unblemished human rights record, want to boast about everywhere. But we kicked it aside and embraced a military junta 
and they made us believe they were soldiers with a difference. And that is, in fact, or was, in fact, the commencement of our inquiry. Soon we realized that they were humiliating our political leaders. They were humiliating the elite, putting them on military trucks and dumping them in military barracks. They attacked people on the roads to sow power. People were shot at by these convoys. We have received evidence from the actual perpetrators. Sanasabali himself came here and told the commission all those shenanigans they were doing. They were imposing their will on the Gambian people in the most distantly manner. Uh, Mr. Chair, we saw them attack the security personnel and dumped most of the senior mil uh, security officers in jail unlawfully. Unlawfully. And we have seen how on the night of September 6th, they nicodemously went to the jail and unlawfully tortured and brutalized the senior military officers. It, it was done cowardly. We have had Edward Singate testify about it. We have had Ibrahim, Ibrahim Chongan testify about it. And a host of older soldiers testify about this. I wasn't prepared, Mr. Chair, to deliver closing arguments. But we would give you a gist, a flavor of what we were dealing with. As if that was not enough in the night of September. They started arresting our political leaders again and torturing them at mile two prisons. We've had, Ed, we've had Edward Singate talk about how he managed to stop it. We have had Sanasabali talk about how he did it, how OJ and others became victims. But this was just these little symptoms that were emerging. Lawyer Usman Silla wrote to Jame and told him how he was seeing the seeds of the status being showed and how Jame was planning to self-perpetuate himself in power and that he must stop. He was one of the few brave men who dared the bejoining dictatorship and protested directly to those concerned. But these guys, they had a different agenda. As they were pushing constitutional reform with a view to bringing in a new constitution, it was quite obvious, at least to lawyer Usman Sela, that these people had no intention of relinquishing power. Even if we were to return to democracy, it would be democracy as per members of the junta. Democracy as per Yaya Jame. And the facts would soon unfold, Mr. Chair. As the junta started doing, taking the necessary steps to silence all sections of Gambian society so that Jame can self-perpetuate himself in power. And we have seen the steps he's taken. The first was to silence the soldiers. We have heard what happened in November 11, where they took 11 officers and men of the Gambian National Army and executed them in cold blood, in utter blatant violation of the law. These men were unarmed. They were stripped, almost naked, humiliated. They were tortured and executed. And we have heard how the leaders sat before the commission and deride the international conventions that apply to all civil men of civilized people people of civilized behavior, the Geneva Conventions, and the additional protocols. Much to your chagrin, Mr. Chair, because I could recall you telling Sana Sabali, I spent 
Yes, teaching generals about these rules. You sit here and tell us that these are not important. They disregarded completely the applicability or the application of these laws and did what they wanted. I recall Edward Singate saying, Jame told us to take no prisoners. And he interpreted that as an order to kill all the ringleaders. In 1994, a group of soldiers hijacked our democracy and suspended our constitution and made us believe that they were soldiers with a difference, that they are going to salvage this country and save it from rampant corruption, nepotism, and bring in transparency, accountability, and probity. And we embraced them, at least many of us, me including, and if we are all honest, most of us, the majority, embraced it. Because also, we were tired of the slow pace of development. We had a great democracy. We had one of the best civil services in the world. We had an unblemished human rights record wants to boast about everywhere. But we kicked it aside and embraced a military junta. And they made us believe they were soldiers with a difference. And that is, in fact, or was, in fact, the commencement of our inquiry. Soon we realized that they were humiliating our political leaders, they were humiliating the elite, putting them on military trucks and dumping them in military barracks. They attacked people on the roads to sow power. People were shot at by these convoys. We have received evidence from the actual perpetrators. Sanasabali himself came here and told the commission all those shenanigans they were doing. They were imposing their will on the Gambian people in the most distardly manner. Uh, Mr. Chair, we saw them attack the security personnel and dumped most of the senior mil uh, security officers in jail unlawfully. Unlawfully. And we have seen how on the night of September 6th, they nicodemously went to the jail and unlawfully tortured and brutalized these senior military officers. It, it was done cowardly. We have had Edward Singate testify about it. We have had Ibrahim, Ibrahim Chongan testify about it. And a host of older soldiers testify about this. I wasn't prepared, Mr. Chair, to deliver closing arguments. But we would give you a gist a flavor of what we were dealing with. As if that was not enough in the night of September. They started arresting our political leaders again and torturing them at mile two prisons. We've had, Ed we've had Edward Singate talk about how he managed to stop it. We have heard Sana Sabali talk about how he did it, how OJ and others became victims. But this was just these little symptoms that were emerging. Lawyer Usman Silla wrote to Jame and told him how he was seeing the seeds of the status being showed and how Jame was planning to self-perpetuate himself in power and that he must stop. He was one of the few brave men who dared the bejoining dictatorship and protested directly to those concerned. But these guys, they had a different agenda. As they were pushing constitutional reform, 
with a view to bringing in a new constitution, it was quite obvious, at least to lawyer Usman Sela, that these people had no intention of relinquishing power. Even if we were to return to democracy, it would be democracy as per members of the junta. Democracy as per Yaya Jami. And the facts would soon unfold, Mr. Chair. As the junta started doing, taking the necessary steps to silence all sections of Gambian society so that Jame can self perpetuate himself in power. And we have seen the steps he's taken. The first was to silence the soldiers. We have heard what happened in November 11, where they took 11 officers and men of the Gambian National Army and executed them in cold blood, in utter blatant violation of the law. These men were unarmed. They were stripped, almost naked, humiliated. They were tortured and executed. And we have heard how the leaders sat before the commission and deride the international conventions that apply to all civil men of civilized people of civilized behavior the geneva conventions and the additional protocols much to your chagrin mr chair because i could recall you telling sana sabali i spent years teaching generals about these rules you sit here and tell us that these are not important they disregarded completely the applicability or the application of these laws and did what they wanted. I recall Edward Singate saying, Jame told us to take no prisoners. And he interpreted that as an order to kill all the ringleaders. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gamsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gamsel Yaibarom. All your pastry, bakery, and quality food, CK Restaurant is the only place to be. We do catering for birthdays, weddings, and all related services. We have all kinds of local foods, American, European, and even beyond.
come and have a taste of our local juice, Ebe and other services. At CK Restaurant, customer satisfaction is our priority. We live in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. Innovarex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve.